Thank you for joining the This is Public Health mini fair today. I'm Tracy Seward. I'm the Senior Director of Outreach and Recruitment for ASKPH, and I'll be moderating your session today. We ask that you stay muted during this session, um, during all the formal presentations. You'll be able to use the chat mechanism shown here that you so you can ask a question or submit comments at any point during the, today's session. Just hit the chat button and type your question into the pop-up box. When all the presenters are done, we will do a general Q&A session after the formal presentation. Um, and then any questions that you have for specific schools and programs, you'll be able to do that after the general Q&A. We'll go into breakout rooms and you'll have a chance to ask questions there. If you want to change your video layout at all, then you can do that here. Um, and you can also hide your non-video participants if you prefer. All right, so I am excited to announce the lineup for today. We will have people from Emory, George Washington, Michigan State, University of Louisville, University of Miami, University of Nebraska, and University of South Florida. So I will kick it on over to Emory, and we will get started today. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Tracy, and uh, welcome to our um, TIP Fair uh, participants. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, my name is Yvonne Boise, and I am the uh, Executive Director of Admissions and Recruitment at the Rollins School of Public Health at Emory University. We are located in Atlanta, Georgia, known as the public health capital of the world. And uh, we just welcomed our largest incoming class in the school's history. And um, I am pleased to report that uh, this year we welcomed our class in person um, and that our students have started their academic year and um, are taking this opportunity in many ways to uh, get to know each other for the first time um, because we were virtual last year. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Rollins School of Public Health today. I'm not going to get into mechanics or specifics around um, the admissions process because uh, we can certainly talk about those things a little bit later, but rather I, sh I thought I would share with you some highlights about our program. So at Rollins, we offer both the MPH or the Masters in Public Health, as well as the MSPH or the Master of Science in Public Health. You can also see displayed here the academic departments, um, which are available for our students. So behavioral, social, and health education sciences, biostats, environmental health, epidemiology, uh, health policy and management, global health, and our executive MPH program, which is a distance-based learning program for working professionals with two or more years of work experience. We have uh, the pleasure of being ranked number four among schools and programs of public health. We currently share that with a couple of other schools that you can see enumerated here on the screen. And um, we're very proud of the academic offerings and student experiences that we can offer to our students. We offer 20 centers for innovative research and training at the Rollins School of Public Health, um, providing our students with the opportunity to specialize in a number of different areas of research in public health. This, of course, includes our um, well-known uh, CIFAR, or Center for AIDS Research, our uh, Center for Global Safe Wash, or Water Sanitation and Hygiene, and our Diabetes uh, Research Center, which uh, does a lot of collaborative work uh, around the world, including um, a home base in India. So lots of wonderful opportunities for students to go outside of their academic area specifically and to delve a little bit deeper into um, the areas of research around campus. Um, lots of students find this to be useful in helping them to um, really begin to use the skill set and knowledge that they're gaining in the classroom and to have an opportunity to apply it. 
They're currently ranked number four in terms of NIH grants. Um, and again, this really allows for lots of opportunities for our students to participate in research experiences and to really practice in the field of public health while earning your MPH or MSDH. An interesting fact is that uh, we are actually right next door to the uh, CDC's office in Atlanta. And so um, when I say we are right next door, we are right next door. So we can literally see in their windows. Um, and beyond um, the strong partnership that has existed for quite some time with the CDC, we are also partner with many of the nonprofit uh, large managed care and consulting organizations that service uh, public health in and around Atlanta. And I would say our network that is available and accessible to our students is something that is um, really, I think, uh, a great opportunity for our students to be able to get to know professionals in the field, to be able to have uh, professional experiences that help to launch our students into successful leadership positions in the field of public health while they are still earning their MPH. So a fun little fact is that a third of master's level trained uh, workforce at the CDC earned their degrees at the Rollins School of Public Health. So um, really great to see that continued uh, partnership. Student life is something that's important to us with um, 18 student organizations, everything from affinity groups to specialized groups and um, offering our students really a, a vibrant experience on campus. And more important to us than the, the amount of dollars we receive or the, the ranking um, that is noted um, is the sort of collaborative culture of our campus that our faculty delight in working with our master's level students and that we don't have a sort of um, academic hierarchy on campus where certain faculty don't teach. All of our faculty at the Rollins School of Public Health teach master's level students. And so um, the people that you see on the front lines of COVID-19, um, some of which I'm sure you've seen in, in, in news outlets and national news outlets and in publishing in um, widely recognized journals, these are the folks that you're actually learning from. Our signature program, the Rollins Earn and Learn, or Real Experience, um, offers students the opportunity to gain uh, professional work experience while earning their MPH at Rollins. And finally, uh, service is something that is important to us and certainly guides our mission. Um, and each year our students participate um, and uh, really partner with the Atlanta community in service. We know that graduate uh, studies present uh, an investment and we partner with our students offering over $7.1 million in scholarships and aid each year. So with that, I look forward to answering your specific questions about the Rollins School of Public Health. Again, my name is Yvonne Poise and I look forward to seeing you in our breakout room a little bit later. Thanks, Yvonne. Up next, we have GW. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Trisha Rilbuto, and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions for Milken Institute School of Public Health. And I want to thank all of you for attending this virtual mini fair today. So this is a picture of our beautiful building. We are located uh, right in the heart of Washington, D.C. at 950 New Hampshire Avenue. And our school was founded in 2014. And so you can see our building here, floor to ceiling windows. We have 14 classrooms and uh, three lecture halls and some lab space as well. And I want to mention that being in Washington, D.C. for your graduate education, not only is GW and Milken your school, but also the city is your home and your living classroom as well. So, so many opportunities for internships and job opportunities after graduation, 
Uh, we have students who have classes or have completed internships on the Hill, working with nonprofit organizations, NGOs, government organizations, et cetera. And so being in Washington, DC is really a benefit to your educational experience. So within the Malcolm Institute School of Public Health, we have seven different academic departments, biostatistics and bioinformatics, environmental and occupational health, epidemiology, exercise and nutrition sciences, global health, health policy and management, as well as prevention and community health. So this is a list of all of the programs that we have within the Malcolm Institute School of Public Health. And I wanna mention that we are the largest school of public health in the country. And so within the MPH programs, we do have 15 different concentrations. And what is wonderful about all of our MPH programs is that you take all the students are taking the same four courses within the MPH program. So taking an EPI course, a biostats course, a health policy fundamentals course, a program evaluation course. So anybody graduating with their MPH from GW is getting some of those same core courses. We do also offer some MS programs. We have uh, some PhD programs and we also offer a DRPH program as well. Um, GW offers um, some online MPH and MHA programs as well, but the admissions process for that is a little bit different. So I'm here sort of representing our residential programs. So I wanna speak briefly about our application requirements. Um, our application is available um, for, to start in spring or fall of next year through SOFIS. So students will need to submit uh, official transcripts um, for the MS and epidemiology and any of the doctoral programs will need um, official and valid GRE scores. So applying for any of the MPH programs for next year, uh, you will not need your GREs. Uh, three letters of recommendation, a statement of purpose, uh, a resume or CV. If you're applying to the MHA program or a doctoral program, there may be an interview as part of the application process. And then for our international students, we'll need a transcript evaluation and also English language proficiency. I do want to mention our application deadline. So as I mentioned, our, our SOFIS application is open. If you're interested in starting in spring of 2022, the application deadline is October 1st, so about a month from, from today. Uh, for any of our doctoral programs, the de application deadline is December 1st, and it is also our master's priority scholarship deadline. So for our students interested in, in scholarship, uh, we do offer um, a great amount of scholarships. We do have uh, two members of our financial aid who work just with our Milken students. Um, and so that is the December 1st, our master's priority scholarship deadline. And then March 15 is our master's uh, final master's deadline. I did wanna speak briefly about our 2021 cohort. Um, just like um, many of my colleagues, we did have our largest incoming class this past year. And we're excited that uh, this week is our first week of classes and we are back in person, all in masks. That's a, a DC policy, regardless of vaccination status, everybody is wearing masks inside. Um, but we do have um, our average master's student coming in with a 3.46. GPA coming out of undergrad with a little bit of work experience and average age of 25, doctoral students coming in with more work experience um, and a little bit older of a student. Um, but we'll be here um, in the chat and then available for the open house in the next hour, but feel free to contact us. You can schedule an appointment with us, attend one of our virtual events. We have, actually, you can also make appointments with financial aid and with our career service center as well. So we have some in-person events, a lot of events virtually, but we want to be able to connect with you however you're comfortable and, and work with your schedule. So um, that is the end of my time. Again, my name is Trisha Aldito from Milton Institute School of Public Health, and I thank you for joining me. Thank you, Trisha. Up next, we have Michigan State. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kiosha Quarter, and I am the Recruitment and Practicum Coordinator for Michigan State University's Master of Public Health program. We are an entirely online program established in 2008. Um, so we've been delivering coursework and academic advising online for a long time. Um, we've graduated over 670 alumni from our program. So we think that's pretty awesome um, being an online program and one of the first. 
location wise, we are located right in the heart of downtown Flint. Um, so many of you know Flint from the water crisis and that big public health disaster that happened in 2014. One of the great things about us being located in downtown Flint, we've been able to work with our division of public health, um, getting research dollars and getting um, actual services to uh, the people of Flint. So it's pretty awesome to be able to work in that capacity with such a large public health issue. Enrollment wise, we currently have about 120 students enrolled in our program studying public health. Um, and of those students, if they decide to go full time, you can complete our program in just under five semesters. So we're looking at about 19 months between you and your MPH degree. So just a little bit about our program. As I mentioned, we are an entirely online program. There's no in-class instruction. And we offer two ways for you to study public health. You can do a master of public health degree, that's the 43 credits, or you can do a core disciplines of public health graduate certificate, that's 18 credits. You can enroll, like I said, full-time or part-time in the program. And it's awesome that we get to offer that flexibility because what we do understand is that our population, um, sometimes they're working or full-time parents um, or that life changes. So you have the option to be full-time and part-time depending on what semester you're in and what's happening in your life. Another great thing about our program is we have these partnerships with some of our um, our graduate programs and undergraduate programs. So if you're looking to become an MD or a DO, but you also want to focus in on public health, we do have agreements. So um, that is an option for you. Our application process, we do have a rolling admission. So we review applications almost every month of the year and the semester deadlines for fall, spring and summer are um, here on the screen. And then um, with our admissions process, I think it's a pretty awesome process. We'd like to let students know, applicants know, that our admissions process considers um, all material in your application as a whole. We don't just pick you know, uh, your personal statement or anything like that. It's a holistic review and a holistic look at your application material. Application requirements here on the screen. One of the largest uh, changes for us is that the GRE is no longer required. So we've removed that. And the academic statement is now something that is required. So in addition to the personal statement, uh, your academic statement is required as well as a resume or CV, three letters of recommendation, official transcripts, a conferred bachelor's degree, and your application to graduate study. We are currently trying to set up our application so we can take apps, apps, applications, excuse me, through SOFIS uh, for summer of 2022. This is our current motto. We just like to point out that it's gonna take you about 15 courses, um, 15 courses between you and your MPH degree. This is the outline of the courses that you would take when you're pursuing that degree with us. One of the great things about our program is this high touch wraparound services that our director um, likes to emphasize. And what it talks about is that we believe in this high touch wraparound because we've gotten you into the program, but we wanna make sure that we reach you through graduation. So we have our academic advisors and career advisors um, pushing you through and supporting you and guiding you through the program. And we also offer faculty mentorship um, and an APHA student membership for each person, each um, student in our program. We also require a culminating experience because we wanna take what you've learned in the classroom and apply it in the real world experience. And with that culminating experience, it's pretty awesome. Um, you can do your experience where you work or live. You don't have to come to Michigan to do so. Um, it's 180 hours and you have to produce two deliverables. So once again, it's taking what you've learned in the real world and applying it taking what you've learned in the classroom and applying it to real world, excuse me. We offer in-state tuition for all students. So it doesn't matter where you live at, if you're national, international or local, it's gonna be 660 per credit hour. More information can be found on our website at mph.msu.edu. Also find us on social media. We're very active and engaged. I just gave you our website. Our Facebook is MSU Public Health. 
Our Twitter is MSU Pub Health, and our Instagram, which is fully ran by our students, is MSU MPH. And just, just to wrap up really quick, um, we are an online program, but we offer many ways of engagement through our student advisory board, our newsletters, and we also have a lot of students that join some of our committees with our instructors. So we look for positive and active ways to engage. So being an online program doesn't mean that you're by yourself. Um, here's our contact information. Um, you can give me a, a, a ring if you have questions, 810-600-5687 or reach out to me at quarterke at msu.edu. Thank you. Thank you. All right, up next we've got University of Louisville. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Uh, I'm DC Jen, and I'm the Senior Admissions Coordinator here at University of Louisville School of Public Health and Information Sciences. Thank you again for taking out time and joining our session today. About University of Louisville, uh, I'll not go into much details, short time. Uh, we are a public university founded in 1798. You can see our location. We are, um, you can say, located in center of, uh, of United States and uh, the original School of Public Health at the University of Louisville was opened from 1919 to 1923. It was one of the nation's first public school, uh, public health school, but due to waning uh, pop enrollment and uh, less students and less programs, it was absorbed into the School of Medicine and then later reopened as a separate school. The University of Louisville is a research one doctoral university and one of the nation's top producers of student Fulbright Award. Um, recently, our student Shakira, she was selected to uh, participate in University of West Indies and study there this fall 2021 and work with local hospitals and uh, social organizations there. We have been named best of the best for LGBTQ inclusivity for the sixth time by Campus Pride Index. We are home to over 23,000 students from across the United States and over 95 countries. Talking a little bit about our leadership, uh, Dr. Neely with the Dr. Neely Bendabudi, she is from India and she has been the president of University of Louisville since 2018. Since she has joined, there have been drastic changes in a um, lot of policies, management, and inclusivity. These are a few of the pictures of our campus. For detailed campus tour or virtual tour, you can also visit our website. The link is provided here. Uh, you can also email me later. I'll share my email address if you're not able to find the link online. These are a few stu uh, pictures of our students from School of Public Health uh, in fields, what they are doing, what they have achieved in the last one year. Uh, the last one year was very difficult, and uh, but for students of School of Public Health, I'm assuming in every school, it was a very busy year. They have been on track, they have been doing a lot of activities, trying to work around COVID and trying to find solutions. Many have been of our students who are busy maybe writing articles, publishing books like Economics of COVID-19, which, which was published uh, last summer and is available to uh, buy on Amazon. We have students who are doing contact tracings. We have students who are doing data analytical work and working on um, COVID data. A little bit about our programs. We do have undergraduate program in public health as well. There's our list of our programs. We also offer a free health free requisite program, which is for students looking to go into professional health uh, programs later after graduation. We also provide uh, accelerated program, which is you can complete your undergrad and your master's in just five years. About our graduate programs, uh, we offer MPS, that is Master of Public Health in five areas of concentration, biostats, epidemiology, global health, maternal and child health, health policy, health promotion, and behavioral sciences. We also offer direct master's degree in biostats, epidemiology, health administration, and clinical investigation sciences. Students who are unable to join our programs in person can also look into our online programs offered. We also have a lot of uh, PhD programs in the field of public health, all listed here. These are some of our notable alumni. Uh, we selected them because they have done great in their field. All of them 
do not have a background in public health studies. They come from various backgrounds. For example, Tasha Golden, she was a graduate in music from University of Louisville. Later on, she discovered her passion for public health and then she studied public health and did a PhD in health promotion and behavioral sciences. She also have a website, tashagolden.com. If you visit her, you can see how many hats she wears. She is an artist, she is a musician, she is a writer, she is a socialist. So, so many hats that she is wearing and doing great. We have students who are working in CDC. Uh, we have students who are working at school levels. We have students who are teaching. Uh, we have a student who graduated and currently working with Apple. This, this are, these are the uh, graduate employability factors of our school. If you look at the percentage of employment from our students, our undergrad students, 67% of them were employed after graduation. And in graduate, 63.7% got employed within three years of graduation. Uh, I'm over my time. So we will be discussing the admissions requirement about our MPH program, rest of our programs, and tuition rates in our session, in our breakout session. And uh, these are my contact details. Feel free to reach out to me and meet me in our, con in our breakout session. Thank you. Thanks, Deepti. Okay, up next we have University of Miami. Alrighty, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Janelle Solis, and I am the Senior Program Coordinator of Admissions here at the University of Miami. So today we're gonna to be talking about our Department of Public Health Sciences. So to begin, these are the 15 graduate plus programs that we have to offer. Our most common programs are the Master of Public Health, the Master of Science in Public Health, and our accelerated option, which we have specifically for the MPH program. Our other three master's degree includes Master of Science in Biostatistics, Climate and Health, Prevention Science and Community Health, and then we have some pathways where students can take a, a joint degree offering with some of our neighboring uh, schools and programs. Here are some fast facts. So in total, students will be completing 45 credits specifically for the MPH program. For those that have an advanced degree, such as an alternative PhD or an MD, you are eligible for a credit waiver, which reduces your credit requirement to 36 credits. We are accredited. We do offer financial support, which is through scholarships and other funding opportunities that are available. We have a three to one student to professor ratio. Average salary after graduation is around 62,000. And graduate courses, all in all, we are a relatively small program. You can kind of tell by the student to professor ratio, but in addition, 42% of our courses have nine students or less. So you are gonna get that intimacy in terms of having that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the faculty members. And we rank number four in National Institutes of, of Funding. And I always say that this is an important fact because what that means is that you're gonna have the opportunity to work on innovative research projects and collaborate on different um, research endeavors, not only with faculty, but also with other students as well. So when we ask our students why they chose us, these are the most cited uh, reasons. So the location, the fact that we're located on the medical campus, not necessarily um, its own college can be an asset because you're gonna be working with other health professionals. So our students do network frequently with doctors, with nurses, um, with biosticians and all these other um, groups of people. And realistically, that also, um, that's what it is in uh, when students graduate. So that is the most common route. I'm so sorry, my dog is trying to, to go outside. So I apologize for the minimal distraction. Um, when it comes to endless opportunities, every semester we do have students do a doc fair. So they're able to participate in this research organization. Our students for the most part do receive publication and those that win actually receive a financial award. So in terms of research, you're gonna have the opportunity from the first day on. When it comes to institutional achievements and reputation, that's another reason that's cited. And Miami, like many other schools that are here, we do provide a diverse learning environment and inclusive culture. 
In terms of the curriculum, we do have a few things that make us stand out. So we are organized within five divisions. So biostatistics, bio environment and public health, epi and population health sciences, health service research and policy, and prevention science and community health. So students are able to group their electives in one of those areas, or if you choose, you could always mix and match. So in terms of the curriculum, there's a lot of options which allow students to specialize in their area of focus. In terms of the capstone and thesis, whether you're doing an M MPH or a Master of Science degree, our students have conducted capstone field experiences and thesis, thesis projects in over 45 countries. So our students are global and they are committing to doing not only uh, research commitments internally and within the University of Miami Health District, but also throughout the country and nationwide. And we also have funding available. So let's say you wanted to travel to another country to to commit to a research project, you can apply to have a, um, a grant. So some of our outcomes, I think I skipped a slide. These are our top outcomes in terms of our employers, which is American Cancer Society, Baptist Health, the Jackson Health System, Florida Department of Health, and much more. And then those that are interested in pursuing a medical degree, 80% of our graduates who pursued medical education were accepted in a US medical school. And I am going to stop here and we can discuss admission next steps. For the most part, I think it's very similar to some of, some of my colleagues. Um, and these are just the deadlines and um, I'll end it at here and hopefully I get to connect with you in the breakout session as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, up next is University of Nebraska. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Grab. I'm the Recruitment and Admissions Specialist for University of Nebraska Medical Center's College of Public Health. Uh, just a couple of quick facts uh, about us. We're located in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, current enrollment for the College of Public Health is 391 students, uh, currently have 70 faculty members. So our um, faculty to student ratio is right, be right between five to one to six to one. Um, and we have a variety of programs that we offer that um, have listed there that I'll go into in a little more detail here in just a moment. Uh, we have five departments within the College of Public Health, so biostatistics, epidemiology, health service research administration, health promotion, environmental, and occupational health. And we also have seven centers for research and practice. Uh, the centers for research and practice allow student and faculty to coordinate on interdisciplinary research and projects within the college, uh, within the uh, medical center as a whole, as well as in the community. Uh, so for our academic programs, um, starting with our professional certificate programs, we have six certificate programs that we offer. Uh, the certificates are between 12 and 18 credit hours, depending on the certificate. All can be completed within one year, and all are directly transferable to our MPH program. And so for our MP MPH program, 42 credit hour program uh, with seven different concentrations. Uh, the program is broken up into 21 of the credit hours are in your core public health classes, including your applied practice experience and capstone, and then 21 credit hours in your concentration courses, as well as electives. Uh, going full time, the MPH can be completed in two years. Uh, we also have a variety of dual degrees that we offer in uh, coordination with other colleges at the medical center, as well as other colleges um, in the University of Nebraska system as a whole. Other programs we have within the College of Public Health, we have a Master of Health Administration program, 46 credit hour program, uh, Master of Science in Biostatistics, uh, we have a DRPH program with concentrations in epidemiology and emergency preparedness, as well as five PhD programs, biostatistics, environmental health, epidemiology, health promotion, disease prevention research, and health service research and policy. Uh, what I've listed here, these are the pro programs that we have that can be completed 100% online uh, with no on-campus requirement. So all of our certificate programs, our MPH program, our MS in biostatistics, as well as our DRPH program can be done 100% online. 
Um, our online classes are asynchronous, so there's not a set time that you have to be logged into class. Um, general mission requirements for our programs. Uh, completion of a SOFIS application, uh, GPA uh, 3.0 or above, uh, copy of resume. Uh, the GRE for the majority of, of our programs is optional. There are only a couple of the PhD programs that still require the GRE, um, but like the MPH certificates, um, DRPH do not. Um, uh, also require a personal statement of interest and letters of recommendation. The certificate programs require two, the, uh, the remainder of the programs require three. Uh, when we're reviewing for admissions, we do um, conduct a holistic review. So there is nothing on here, um, including GPA, that is a disqual automatic disqualifier for not being considered for the program. Uh, current tuition uh, on campus for our professional programs, which is our MPH and certificates in state, 461 a credit hour, out of state, 1120. Uh, graduate programs for on campus for our MS and PhDs. Uh, looking at 351 in-state and 977 out-of-state. In our online programs, um, it's a flat rate. We don't um, charge a different rate for in-state or out-of-state, so all of our online programs are currently 597 per credit hour. So I will be available for questions in our breakout room right after this, and I have my direct contact information here on the screen. Um, I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right, last but not least, we've got University of South Florida. Awesome, thank you so much, Tracy. Go ahead and share my screen and send. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Neil Blyweiss from the Office of Pre-Admissions and Outreach here at the University of South Florida, and I'm joined by my colleague. Hi, good morning. My name is Kristen Zonka with the USF Health Office of Pre-Admissions and Outreach. And we are here to share a little bit with you today about the College of Public Health here at USF. Um, and for those that are not familiar, USF is located in Tampa, Florida. Uh, so we're kind of in the center of the state on the West Coast. We are a large public university consisting of three different campuses. Uh, with our College of Public Health located on the Tampa campus, and then we have uh, two other campuses in St. Petersburg and Sarasota, which are both about an hour away. But just a little bit about the college itself. Uh, so we were the first school of public health in the state of Florida. We've been around for about 36 years now. Um, and similar to what you've heard from most of the other programs, we also welcomed in our largest class uh, this year with uh, the extreme increase in interest in public health that has happened across the nation. Um, and through the College of Public Health, um, we do have just shy of about 1,000 graduate students that are enrolled and about uh, 3,600 undergraduate students in our different programs. Uh, we are ranked nationally in the top 20 public health programs per US News and World Report. Um, and we are, of course, accredited by SEEK, the Council on Education for Public Health, through to 2026. Um, and then I know I just talked about the numbers. Of course, it's a little, a little bit different now that we've started the fall and we know the exact head counts. So on the screen here, we'll show the list of uh, degrees that we offer within our College of Public Health. Um, at the graduate level, we do currently offer three um, degrees at the master's level, and that would include our Master of Public Health, our Master's of Science in Public Health, and then our Master of Health administration. And additionally, we do have two doctoral programs as well, our PhD program and our DRPH program. And with our degrees, some do have the ability to be completed fully online, um, as well as part time. So it definitely offers flexibility for those that are working professionals and doing school uh, part time. Um, we do offer multiple concentrations for the NPH, the MSPH, uh, the PhD, and the DRPH, depending on the student's unique interest and uh, career path. 
And we also offer a variety of graduate certificates. So if a student is interested in not necessarily completing a full degree quite yet, let's say they want to get their feet wet with a graduate certificate, or even perhaps let's say um, someone already has their graduate degree in public health, but want to earn a certificate to get a credential in a different area of public health. We do have quite a few offerings um, for those two, and then we also do offer 12 fully online for the grad certificates. Um, in addition, the College of Public Health does offer several uh, concurrent degrees. Um, so those are as well um, something we can discuss in more detail um, during the breakout room sessions. There we go. Um, so across all of our different concentrations, our programs primarily fall into five core disciplines. Uh, which are community and family health, environmental and occupational health, epidemiology and biostatistics, global health, and then health policy and management. So just to give you a, a couple examples of concentrations, that includes opportunities like maternal and child health, uh, nutrition and dietetics, epidemiology, applied biostatistics, global health practice, global communicable disease, infection control, the list goes on, uh, but those are at least a couple of examples of our programs. So we will wrap up today with a quick video of why USF's College of Public Health rocks. And then also listed on the screen here is our website and our contact information for the Office of Pre-Admissions. And we certainly hope you, to see you in our breakout room uh, here shortly. Thank you. College of Public Health rocks because of the dedicated students' commitment to research. There are world-class faculty here that treat you like a colleague from the very beginning. Shortly after starting here, I developed some great mentoring relationships with research staff and faculty. The College of Public Health rocks because in our philanthropic efforts, it teaches us to remain humble. It's amazing because of the support that you receive. We have a sense of community and family. The College of Public Health rocks because they inspire you to do better for yourself. And they're always looking out for each other and lifting each other up. Thank you all so much and go Bulls. Go Bulls. <laughs> Thank you all so much. All right. So we're about to go into a general Q and A. So as I mentioned before, you can enter your questions in the chat function. Um, these should be general questions that can be open to any of the schools. Um, and we will then break into a uh, breakout room shortly after so you can ask all your specific questions. So as people are finding that and getting their questions, does anybody wanna share a tip about um, the personal statement and um, something that you can tell us to make a personal statement really good? I can go ahead from, uh... GW, I think what's really important for students to share in their personal statement is not only why they're interested in studying at GW, but the program of interest, why it's their program of interest, and, and doing showing their research that they've looked into the school, they've looked into the program, and so they know why they're interested in the school and why they're interested in the program and, and what they're interested in, in giving back to the program and taking away from the program as well. I think to add on, if I, if I can, is for students that may have had academical challenges or maybe your freshman year, you may have had, uh, you may have failed a class for full transparency, you're going to want to articulate that in your personal statement and put how you've overcame it. So maybe you retook the class, maybe you did some tutoring, but you want to show the admissions committee that you are academically ready for graduate education and, and sometimes your best place, at least for us, is, is your personal statement as well. Excellent. So um, a question came in about for international students, which programs have the STEM extension for the visa? So I don't know if you all know which programs of yours qualify.
well, I, I, you and both our programs qualify. I didn't want to be the only one, but <laughs> I don't know if any other school does. <laughs> Like I said, at UNMC, um, our concentrations in epidemiology, biostatistics, and environmental and occupational health qualify. Excellent. I see some of the admissions officers are answering in the chat as well. Um, can we talk a little bit about scholarships? And um, I know a lot of you mentioned your scholarship deadline. I also want to plug here that ASPPH has a scholarship resource called Financing Your Degree. And I will post that in the chat while people are answering. But um, there's a question about what makes somebody a competitive candidate for um, scholarships and what kind of what levels of support. Like, is it a portion of your uh, tuition or a full ride? I, I'll go. So we um, do offer one scholarship. Our scholarship is very, it's regional and very specific to um, uh, an applicant or someone accepted into our program that lives or works in the Flint community. So the one full tuition scholarship that we have is, um, is very specific, but we do encourage our um, applicants to go to our website and look at um, the information that we have as it relates to tuition and financial aid. And we offer support in trying to help them locate different opportunities to help pay for their degree. Thanks. Anybody else wanna add um, live? It looks like, again, some people are answering in the chat. Um, for us, every student who's admitted does receive a 20% scholarship. So that's automatically awarded should you receive admission. And then from there, you are eligible for additional aid depending on your application and if you apply prior to the priority deadline. Great. A few of you talked about um, MSPH degrees and MPH degrees. Can somebody share the difference between those? Yeah, so I'd be happy to jump in for that. Um, so with University of South Florida, we do offer concentrations in both areas. Um, with our NPH, they tend to be more practice-oriented degrees, and so that is seen in uh, the exit requirements. Students will complete um, an applied practice experience, which could be an internship, it could be a service learning opportunity, study abroad, um, so forth. Um, whereas with our MSPH programs, those tend to be more research focused. Um, so with that, it would include a research thesis as the exit requirement. Um, we do offer concentrations that are uh, offered in both degrees, or we also do have some that are unique to each degree. So I see some questions in the chat that are um, specific to individual schools about GRE requirements or exemptions and IELTS and TOEFL. So um, I'm gonna ask the audience, to please ask those in the breakout rooms for the specific schools. See if there's anything else general in here. If not, we might break into our breakout rooms a few minutes early. Um, does anybody have uh, graduate assistantships available at their institution? Yes, great. Okay. All right. Well, um, oh, it's interesting. How is justice and equity integrated into your curriculums? Might be a tough one. I know for us, uh, we actually launched um, a pilot program last year where we had our students and faculty members read a book um, that was voted by the students and we had a monthly conversation and it did have to do um, like with the Black Lives Matter movement and things like that. And so that's a way that we have incorporated that in the past. We are looking into another text of potentially offering one this year, but we do try to listen to our students and see what's needed and, and look at what's been taking place in society for that uh, year. Excellent. Um, 
does anybody allow you to submit an application to more than one MPH concentration at your institution? Most of our schools and programs only allow you to apply to one concentration. Okay, I'm going to also post another um, resource in the chat. Our program finder, there is um, a question about JD and MPH programs, but if you wanna search for those programs or any other programs, um, you can search through our program finder and that should help you. All right, sounds like the questions are very specific to each of your institutions. So I think we're gonna break out into our rooms all a little bit early. So if you uh, from the admissions office want to head over, I'm going to share my screen again one last time. Let's see this. Okay, so just so you know, we have a few more upcoming events. These are the next two. You can get a full list on this is publichealth.org and see what um, other institutions you can talk to. Then to go into the breakout rooms, each of our schools and programs are going to have their own breakout room. You should be able to select a breakout room by choosing the four dots um, on the bottom of your screen. And you can visit multiple exhibitors. Uh, we will be open for the next hour and 10 minutes. Um, if you're having any issues switching between rooms or not able to select a room, feel free to um, stay in the main room, we can assign you, and then you just click the join button when we assign you. And then you are also able to come back to the main room at any time and we can help you. Also, we will be in this room um, for any general questions that you have or issues at any point. So that is what we have for you today. We will, again, we're opening up the breakout room, so feel free to pick the breakout room and, and and start bumping around and, and talking to our admissions staff. Thank you all so much for joining.